thank you all for being here. And I think there's maybe a little bit of confusion. I don't know. They said green, and uh, then they invited me, and I'm going to be speaking about maybe the other green. So, Grandma Mary's sitting in an assisted living facility. Uh, she's watching TV. Unfortunately, she got diagnosed with cancer, and she just completed her first uh, chemo uh, treatment. And uh, she has some side effects from her chemo. She's not feeling really well. So she decided, she's watching TV and uh, saw Dr. Sanjay Gupta talk about how cannabis has been shown to help to alleviate the side effects of uh, the adverse events of uh, chemo. So Grandma Mary tried cannabis maybe 50, 60 years ago and didn't have a really good experience. So she decided, Sanjay Gupta, right? So she believed Dr. Sanjay Gupta, decided to try it again, and uh, went to a dispensary, talked to a butt tender there. The butt tender said, Grandma, here's some gummies. But go low and slow. Take it easy. So Grandma listened, and she decided to take a gummy. So she took one, and she waited, and nothing happened. She waited some more. Still nothing happened. Then she waited a little bit longer, and she began to experience her heart racing, which is actually normal because uh, THC is a vasodilator, dilated blood vessels, your heart will pump faster. But then she started experiencing some extra anxiety and stress, and that proceeded to continue for hours to a point where she was really having a stressful situation, and she actually reported ha uh, having a little bit of uh, hallucinations even. Now, a day went by, and Grandma started feeling a little bit better. She decided she's going to stay away from the devil's lettuce. Never again. And then she ended up telling everybody else that she could find in her assistant living facility to do the same, stay away from cannabis. Now. Grandma Mary, unfortunately, had the trifecta that created this situation for her. First of all, she was a poor metabolizer. So just so you know, there's a series of genes called cytochrome P450, which each of those produces an enzyme that allows us to metabolize or break down different things. Like there's one for lactose, there's one for gluten, and there are several different enzymes that metabolize THC, CBD, and THC and CBD together. In addition, Grandma Mary also had what's called a homozygous allele combination in a gene called FA, which stands for fatty acid amide hydrolase. Now, I know it's all a little bit of uh, science-y uh, information here, but I'm gonna try to break it down this way. So, fatty acid amide hydrolase produces an enzyme that actually metabolizes anandamide. Anandamide is an endogenous endocannabinoid that the body produces on its own. And people that have this genetic predisposition are more prone to stress reactivity. So to give you an example of how this can actually work, let's say that you're crossing the street and a car comes out of nowhere, almost hits you. So what happens? You have all these neurochemicals that are pumped into your bloodstream. You have some adrenaline, you have some dopamine, you have some norepinephrine, you have some cortisol. And when your body, when your brain realizes there's no lion chasing the jungle, it does two things. There's a reuptake process of those neurochemicals, and then your brain releases other neurochemicals to get you back to balance or homeostasis. And one of them happens to be anandamide. Now, if you're actually breaking down more of your natural anandamide, you're much more prone to the cortisol staying into your bloodstream longer. Now, this can cause all kinds of challenges for the individual. When the cortisol stays in your bloodstream longer, your immune system can over-respond to that, so have an overactive or immune response. And what we'll feel is inflammation and pain. It usually starts in our joints, our uh, ankles, knees, hips, elbows, neck, etc. The good news is that you can consume some THC, which when binds a receptor, and I'll explain that in a little bit, it releases some of that natural neurochemical, which is called anandamide. But the biphasic nature of cannabis, if you take a little bit too much, 
it actually does the opposite and triggers that stressful event. So about 10% of the population also are slow and poor metabolizers of THC. Has anybody ever had an adverse experience with an edible? Yeah, well, that could be the reason why. Not only when you, when you consume cannabis in, a, it's a, in its decarboxylated form, when you consume it and you eat it, your liver converts it to 11-oxyhydroxide, which, which can be five to 50 times more powerful than just consuming it sublingually or combustibly. But if you're a poor metabolizer and you have these other genetic predispositions, uh, you're in for a possibly interesting journey, let's just say. <laughs> um, so what is the endocannabinoid system? How many people ever heard of the endocannabinoid system? Okay, great. Well, the endocannabinoid system was actually discovered in 1992, and it is our primary modulating system. It regulates all the other systems in our bodies. And the way that it does that, it gets signals from the other systems, and think of it as like salmon swimming upstream. It gets that information, and it goes up the central nervous system to the brain, and then that brain then decides which neurochemicals it needs to secrete in order to create that homeostasis, that balance within the other systems. And the two endogenous endocannabinoids or neurochemicals that it releases are anandamide, which is, as I said previously, so the word anand in Sanskrit means bliss. So this is our bliss hormone. And the other one's called 2-AG. So how does cannabis work? And by the way, how do drugs work in general? We consume a plant. That plant actually binds to receptors that we have in our brain and our bodies, and it releases its own neurochemicals. Same way, you know, cocaine binds to your dopamine receptors and squirts a bunch of dopamine. So when we get dependent on uh, cocaine, it's really more or less that we're dependent on dopamine because it's such a, you know, addictive neurochemical. Uh, so the two receptor areas that we have are CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors. So THC in its decarboxylated form, and when I say decarboxylate, heated with pressure, drops the acid molecule from the plant and creates delta-9, which cre creates receptor binding to that area. So CB1 is THC. So think of it as your brain activity, motor activity, uh, thinking, also the one that gives you the appetite, the munchies. And by the way, it's not just an appetite. The munchies, the cravings that you get are for, it's a feel-good chemical. So you, nobody ever you know, consumes cannabis and says, hey, I would like to get some kale, right? You want what? Sugar, you want salt, and you want fat. That's where the munchies come in. So also pain, so it works as an analgesic. And CB2, when you consume CBD or cannabidiol, also in these decarboxylated form, it binds to your CB2 receptors and it secretes 2-AG, which helps to regulate a lot of the other functions that you see on the screen, like uh, uh, immune system activity, and gut, etc. Now, it's complex enough, CBD and THC, how it works, but cannabis has over 400 different components to it, molecules. So think of it, we're super complex, cannabis is super complex. How do you find what really truly works for you? It's like finding a needle in a haystack. And I didn't even talk about terpenes. Uh, has anybody ever heard of terpenes? Yeah, great. So terpenes are really essential oils. So plants produce terpenes, which are their essential oils. Now in cannabis, these essential oils actually do several different things. Number one, they give it its smell. Number two, they work in conjunction with the cannabinoids to provide you an effect. So to give an example, as you see in the middle, there's lavender. Linalool is the terpene. It actually smells like lavender, it comes from lavender as well, and it's dominant in certain uh, cultivars of cannabis, and that gives you a calming effect, just like lavender does. And limonene uh, is found in citrus fruit and also in certain uh, cultivars of cannabis, and it gives you that dopamine, GABA binding affinity, it gives you that boost up. So if anybody has er ever heard of like sativa and indica, by the way, that, they don't exist anymore, that's, that's a myth. 
uh, sativas and indicas are really determined a hybrid, and it has to do with the terpene profile that's in the cultivar that you're consuming. So there are ones that give you that lift up, they have a certain terpene profile, like limonene, and then certain ones that are sedative, like myrcene, that smells skunky and diesely, and those are found more in the indica dominant hybrids. So this is the question. How can we transform lives, improve access to medicinal cannabis, and advance patient outcomes? Well, the first thing we need to do is fix this. All these states are getting into legalizing cannabis for recreational or adult use purposes. That's fine, but what we're forgetting are the people that are contacting us that have diseases, conditions, that actually need medicinal cannabis. And they don't want to try to figure it out. At the end of the day, you want to know what to take, you want to know how much to take, and you also know, need to know where to get it. So who is Endocana Health? Well, basically, we're a company that is at the intersection of precision medicine and digital health. And what we're doing is we're looking at phytocannabinoids, other therapeutics, and we're aligning that from your DNA to your biometric feedback so we can provide a full, um, a full approach to therapeutics looking from the beginning all the way to the efficacy modeling of how those protocols are specifically working for the individual. That minimizes adverse effects and actually creates what we call biocommerce. So think of you being able to go into your Netflix queue uh, and finding all your own personalized therapeutics, your vitamins, your nutrients, your phytocannabinoids, all that stuff that's created specifically for you, and then measure the efficacy of those as we go forward. So just some screenshots for the sake of time. I'm gonna to try to go through this quickly. Uh, how does it work? So endoDNA is, the, is a test. You can take your, uh, you can get your endoDNA test. You can swab the inside of your cheek. You register because we're HIPAA and GDPR, GDPR compliant for your security. And uh, uh, then you can also take the results that you have from a 23andMe or an Ancestry, and you can upload it to our site, and then we'll provide you a report within 30 seconds or less. And what do you get? So you get your personalized report on your genetic predispositions. You also look at uh, dosing protocol, and what we talked about earlier, uh, dosing based on metabolic function. In addition to that, we're looking at drug-to-drug -drug interaction. This is hugely important. We have a lot of people that are contacting us who are taking uh, antidepressants, SSRIs, and there is an interaction between certain cannabinoids and your prescription medications. So try not to consume them together at the same time. Stagger your consumption based on metabolic function. Then we provide you a report based on symptomatic conditions, what people consume cannabis for, and where genetics play a role. So cognitive function, anxiety, pain, nausea, uh, and sleep is a huge one. And on all that, takes your genetic predispositions into account and tries to find the right cannabinoid ratios for you based on what's called C of A, certificates of analysis, or test results from different products, and where you can find those products. So that's part one. A doctor can also use this test just like they would any other test for your urine, your blood work, and get that information back into the electronic health record system so they can make informed decisions about treatment protocols for their patients. Now, this is really, truly a game changer. Right now, we're looking at 675,000 uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms. That's what we're genotyping. With whole genome se sequencing, we're going to 64 million. And now we can do not only your phytocannabinoid profile, but we can, and your endocannabinoid profile, but what we can do is personalized nutrients, personalized supplements, skin, disease predispositions, anything that's specifically as we would refer to as precision medicine. In addition to that, we're also involving what's called polygenic risk scores. And what these are, are hundreds of thousands of people have been shown to take certain, uh, have been uh, shown that certain genetic predispositions uh, that they have for certain diseases. So thousands of people with hundreds of thousands of people with thousands of genes, which give you a score for your predisposition. So you can see if you're predisposed to certain diseases, or you have things like inflammation predispositions or major depressive disorder, et cetera. 
The other thing that we're uh, doing is we have labs. And what I mean by labs is, and I'll explain what this is, we have three specific labs where we hold your hand through an entire process because we want to establish efficacy. So sleep, mood, and pain. And the way sleep lab works is you, you can fill out a health, uh, a, um, health profile, then meet with your care counselor online, and they make a determination to speak to a uh, healthcare professional. They would then prescribe labs. It could be your blood work, uh, your also endo DNA test. They'll review the results, provide you a protocol that's personalized and specific to you, and then also provide you a biometric device, like the one I'm wearing now, which is the EndoLink device. And now we can together, empowered with your healthcare professional, measure the efficacy of the protocol to see how it's working. Once a month, you can meet with your care counselor and you can modify that protocol to make sure that we get it exactly right for the individual. Behind the scenes, we get DNA and genotype information, but also we get this raw data that comes from the biometric device that goes to the cloud, and we can see what your heart rate variability is, what your blood oxygen level is, all the information, and then we can use machine learning to make better predictive inferences. So it's truly a personalized experience. This is uh, just some screenshots to show you what the app would look like. So not only are you using it you know, like your Fitbit, but you're also getting really precise information about your sleep quality. It's not about sleeping eight hours a night specifically, it's about what kind of sleep are you getting? Are you getting that refreshing sleep? Are you getting alpha and theta? And by the way, people that are not, they're sort of on this hamster wheel. So the stress during the day shows up in maybe bruxism, just grind your teeth. So you're not getting that restful sleep, you're not able to get reset, and you're sort of running uh, on that hamster wheel. So just quickly to go into some research. We are involved in clinical research. Uh, this is a study that we finished on something called cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. You can see this on PubMed. We found a genetic predisposition for certain adverse effects that people are seeing consuming certain cannabinoids. And there's a clinical trial uh, that we are in phase two clinical trial working with Harvard Medical on anxiety and how certain cannabinoids like cannabidiol is impacting uh, their anxiety. So our goal overall is to have the world's largest observational study. Now, going back to Grandma Mary, I did not forget. So Grandma Mary, as you guys know, she said she swore off the devil's lettuce, but when we did her endo-DNA test and we found that she's poor metabolizer and has a trifecta, we were able to go back and modify her protocol to a much more balanced uh, formulation with CBD and THC and different terpene profiles, also method of consumption, because eating it uh, was pretty intense for her, so it was sublingual delivery under your tongue. And Grandma Mary came back, and one of the things she said in her email was, thank you for letting me be me again. And at the end of the day, she also walked around her uh, facility where she was getting her chemo and was giving out her business card to people and saying, call these guys, they can help. Um, I just wanted to, I don't know how much time I have left, but I wanted to share something where I didn't get a chance to really put this in, in my presentation. But I wanted to share the experience uh, with, with all of you because this is the reason why we do what we do. So we have a, a doctor, a friend of ours, uh, who we work with, and her husband's a runner, runs in the mornings, and uh, happened to trip and fall and end up in neuro ICU. So this is the text that I got. Um, Dan has three areas of bleed, two contusions, one frontal lobe, and left occipital subarachnoid hemorrhage, so bleeding on the brain. Not very responsive, breathing on his own, can eat, knows me and himself, and that's all. So the next text I got, hi, so I've been administering the oil as directed. In 12 days, Dan has made incredible improvements, so much so that he's going home on Wednesday to work with his rehab as an outpatient. People have marveled at his success. Thank you for your amazing gift. I think it saved a life. And that's what we do, what we do. That's the reason why. Thank you so much for your time, appreciate it.